Hello everyone, welcome one more week to our Mujeres en el Quinto Elemento, Women in the Fifth Element. It's a show that Christina and I we do every week, sometimes in Spanish, majority in Spanish, but we are starting to have a new aspect of it in English. And we are so proud because we meet and we know amazing women that they have their voices in English in order to understand us. So we needed to bring them. So today we have a great woman that I met her in very weird circumstances that were fun. She's uh, full of light, resilience. She is enduring a wonderful life and she has a lot to tell us. Right, Chris? Yes, yes. Her name is Rosita Tigliola, and she's amazing. Um, I mean, fashion is in her veins. She mm -hmm. almost like, you know, um, bred it <laughs> since she was a little girl. And there's like so much for her to discover, for us to discover in this conversation. And uh, yeah, we like that you enjoy it as much as we are. Uh, Rosita, we have, uh, yeah, she's a jewel. Okay. So Amazing. Enjoy. Yeah, she is. She is. And I am so happy, Chris, that we are doing this in English because it's also our voice, right? So yeah. um, I think um, this is uh, going to be a conversation that for sure you are going to enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy it very much and don't forget to subscribe and like, and like. <laughs> both things subscribe and like. Okay, enjoy. So glad you're here. Mm -hmm. so glad. Happy to be with you and thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Of course, I think your story needs to be told, you know, at least whatever you want to tell, you know, I think it's <laughs> Absolutely. It is amazing. I was telling Christina about you and, and your amazing story. And, <laughs> yeah. So and uh, I want you to talk a little bit like the other day we were talking that you, you were telling a story about how all of a sudden your nephew or your niece just got a jacket and it was a big jacket. By the, it was by the time that you were working for Health Not Lang. And all of a sudden I said, you work for Health Not Lang. Yes. That, I don't know that story about Rosita. So tell, tell us a little bit that story and your relationship <laughs> with fashion and your relationship with high fashion, obviously. And... Yeah, a relation. More than a relation for me, it has always been in my mind, in my heart. I've been, as soon as I started working, I worked in fashion. Mm. So for me, it's a long time memory. I never stopped. And I started about, I was maybe 22, 23. I started working in showrooms. And I never, ever stopped. That's what mm -hmm. I've been doing for my whole life. At the beginning, I was just uh, helping models to get dressed up. And I was, I remember one of the designers who told me, you are the only one who understands how the model have to wear my clothes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was really nice to me because I was young. And I, oh, yes, cool. That's great. <laughs> And little by little, step by step, I was absorbing everything because I really loved everything connected to that field. It was, it was my, the thing I wanted to do in my life. So I was really taking all the information. And step by step, I ended up in another showroom where it was the first place where I've been working for about four years. So in that place, I could learn everything under a commercial point of view. And I was talking to all the designers. So I was learning how they were setting up their collection, how, how they were doing research mm. to create and design the following collection. So it was 
not only because when you work in big showrooms, you are focused only on one aspect of the whole thing. In that place, I was, that's what happens in small places, you take mm. and you have a global view because you do everything. So you learn everything. So after 40 years in uh, this place, it was a time in which the market was going down, they needed to reduce the costs. So they said, what do you think is if for one year we take just a break, so I sent some CVs and in that moment, Prada Group just bought Helmut Lang. So they needed more staff. And I ended up there working for, I did about three selling campaigns uh, for Helmut Lang. And it was at the same time, no, not really at the same time, because I got diagnosis with my super monster a little bit uh, perhaps a couple of years earlier. Mm. And when I was working there, it was in Villa Melzi, which is a very beautiful villa. It was on two or three floors. So I was in charge of the accessories and shoes, of course. Couldn't be different. Of course. Of course. (laughs) No. (laughs) And it was on the third floor, no elevator. And I was going, I was like, just out of the hospital after one week of cortisone, jumping up and down the stairs. Like, yeah, but let's, let's, stop. let's stop for a second, Rosita, and, and tell us um, what is your monster about? <laughs> because <laughs> if, if people might keep uh, hearing yeah. this kind of monster, but they don't really know what, what you're it? talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a big monster, a very big monster, really scary. In 98, I've been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, mm-hmm. which I could, couldn't even pronounce and say the name because it was yeah. so frightening. It completely changed my life. At the beginning, it was a shock, a total mm-hmm. shock. I've been at the hospital for one month and I think I cried for the whole month. I couldn't do nothing else than cry every day from night, day, continuously because it was something I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't understand, I couldn't accept. Hmm. I, didn't, I didn't accept it completely even 20 years later, so because it's, I think it's almost impossible to accept something like that. But I was young, and to me it was something I couldn't relate to, absolutely. Mm. Go staying in the hospital and looking around me to the other people, seeing what was happening, I couldn't understand that that, exactly that thing was happening to me as well so it has been really really tough at the same time I was working as soon as I got out of the hospital I kept on working I never stopped because I didn't want to focus on that thing Mm -hmm. I didn't want that monster to rule my life so I never stopped working I I except for the month and perhaps a couple of weeks after the hospital. As soon as I went out, I went back to the showroom. I went back to the gym step by step. I started doing exactly the same things I used to do. I tried at least for for about 10 years, being honest, I shouldn't complain that much. And I had to learn not to complain because going to the hospital, I met people who were in a condition which was worse, much worse than mine. Mm -hmm. So talking to them, I learned that I should not complain at all. Mm -hmm. I just should shut up my mouth and say, okay, Rosita, it's bad for you, but there's something worse that some people are facing yeah you know rosita so i'm listening to you and about the multiple sclerosis is a 
long word and uh, intense. Uh, had a friend that um, had that, but he was old, you know, he was like in his 70s, no? So I can imagine how hard must have been for you, no? So, so young and suddenly like, boom, having that. And something that you said just a moment ago, talking about, you know, that you were in the hospital and people were there, you know, mm, suffering too, you know, like they were in, in a really bad places. And that kind of like make you feel like, you know, a, you know, is in a way it puts your life in like, okay, you know, this is horrible, you know, what is happening to me. And, uh, you know, I'm still alive. Uh, you know, some people can, some people is, is having it worse than me. You know, I know like the worst or the, the monster is intense, but some people has also monsters. So it kind of like that, when I'm listening to you, it, rem it reminds me, you know, I'm, you know, I don't have things like that in my, you know, degenerative diseases, but, you know, I imagine that a lot of people can relate when you, when we experience a really, you know, bad situation, no, in ourselves, like suddenly, and looking around, around our world and seeing other people, you know, like, for example, I want to tell you something that happened to me, Yolanda knows, uh, the other day I was having a really hard time for a few days, whatever situations in my life, no? And then, you know, the conflict with Palestina, remember Yolanda? Mm -hmm. That is so intense and so heartbreaking. And, and, you know, I just can't open that door and I just feel like, whew. and in that moment when, when I see the suffering of, you know, Palestinian of others. people, of others, of others really, no? it kind of puts your life in perspective, you know, it's like, okay, you know, <laughs> it's like a tool, like I see in you, this tool is like, you know, the resilience It's like, okay, here is the monster, <laughs> like you call it. I wonder if you, that monster that has been with you for so many years, uh, like Yolanda started the conversation about your relationship with fashion, uh, your relationship with the monster has been, you know, it's been with you, no, all this time uh, from a place of like, wow, suddenly I hear the monster or, or, you know, now it's with me, the monster, <laughs> you know, he comes, I mean, probably it's always there, but sometimes it's more intense than others. And then you keep going and you keep going in your creativity, in your work and you're like that. And how has been your relationship with with a monster because it's your it's part of you uh, impulse your i mean if it, if it has impulse your creativity even deeper or 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 an aspect of yourself what what some what the monster had brought you besides you know pain hmm. <laughs> <laughs> a lot yeah. of pain i was 28 28 years old so Mm, I was yeah. young. Yeah. <laughs> I was you young. had to like, like, like kind of like very young and I had to like find tools to like deal with this. No, I mean, yeah. I can't with 20 years old, you're still so young. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So I'm not able to see illness as religious people do. So they see it as something positive. I'm not at that point at all. Mm -hmm. I would be much happier without it. Yeah. <laughs> because I really feel that it's something inside of me which is working against myself, mm. which is yeah. really hard to accept. Mm. You know that it's you against you. Yeah. So it's... Mm. A bit complicated. It's to a handle. battle, no? I yes. mean, it's like a battle. It's, yes. Mm -hmm. Never ending. Never ending. Because even when it's quiet, when you think it's quiet, in fact, it, it's, it never is completely quiet. Because there is always something working inside that you don't know, perhaps sooner or later, will come out again. Mm. So it's yeah. not... 
easy. I don't see it as something that is bringing me. For sure, I changed. Yeah. That is, I changed a lot. I don't know if it only because of the monster of, or because now I'm 50, so I see things differently. differently. Yeah. But for sure, I changed. Yeah. I always kept going, always. I never stopped. Never, never. Even mm. when I should, because it was so crystal clear that I needed to stop. I needed to take time for myself to listen to what was happening and give me time just to breathe a little bit and relax. I was never able to do it. Never, ever, mm. never. Mm. So keep going yeah. was my mantra, perhaps. Keep, keep going. going, keep going, and don't listen and keep going. Wow. Well, mm. you know, that's a... a, a a really powerful mantra <laughs> that a lot of people, you know what I mean? I mean, there's a, and probably you came to this world like with this spirit, because for me, I'm very curious to that, that aspect of, you said, you know, I always love, I mean, it was like fashion, like, you know, you, since you, you start working, it was that. So I imagine you when you're saying that, like a little girl, <laughs> <laughs> with, you know, playing fashion with the dolls. It's like, have it very clear. There was like, was any time doubt in your mind or just, you always knew, you just like, this is it? I think it was clear because my mother is a seamstress. So we mm. always had boxes full of buttons and she was mm. making the patterns and help me to draw this. And what color do you want for your dress? And what buttons do you want to put on this? So okay. it was there. like a training since I was four or five years old. Wow. It was a training. Just mm. choose this. And we had denim backpacks handmade. She was making everything for us, for me and mm. my sister and my brother. So we was, I was choosing the fabrics and buttons and things to match. Mm -hmm. ribbons this and that so it was that, yeah. that was the thing and for me <laughs> and that's what I see interesting no I take the the thread the thread of your mm -hmm. buttons and the things that you were collecting and and how you start to relate to your monster with through the stories right you start telling the story of your life through buttons, taking a button from here, I mean, in the form of shoes, and taking a coat here in the form of Paris, taking a, something here in the form of a romantic trip with your husband, or the moment that you met him and you kind of like weaving, right? In a way, using fashion, using all the elements and textures that mm -hmm. you know so deep in you that they have been part of your life and you start writing a book about your stories and your relationship with the monster. Kind of like you start integrating it even though you can stand him or stand her, I don't know what it is, but <laughs> you start Create a relationship. Tell me about, or tell us, no, because Christina doesn't know very much about this book you're writing right now. I mentioned briefly to her about it, but I think a fantastic idea in terms of creating stories that normalize your relationship mm -hmm. with the monster. Mm. Yeah, it has been, let's say, not really something that I conceived since the very beginning as a book. Mm -hmm. I did a workshop where I started writing about fashion and lifestyle. And then just by chance after uh, I just was coming back from the hospital where I had my monthly treatment, which is my actual treatment I do against the monster. I hope it's against finally if it works mm -hmm. <laughs> and I wrote something about what was happening to me relating some fashion details as I do because I'm used to do it and so the other people said oh that's cool you shouldn't stop doing it why don't you continue with these stories 
And so they gave me the motivation to start talking about it because usually I'm not really open <laughs> to talk about what happened to me. Yeah. Because since the very beginning, I was not showing it that much. That's what happened even when I used to go to met doctors. The fact that I talked for me as a woman, I used to put a little makeup, brush my hair and selecting my outfit, even if it was just meeting a doctor for me was it was natural so when they see you you look oh that's no fantastic fabulous mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, what's the problem here <laughs> you look great yeah but inside it was exactly the the opposite i was not great it was yes great i mm -hmm. didn't consider great but because great is when outside and inside meets together the outside for me it was normal to handle it because it was easy to find a solution the problem was the inside that was not matching my expectations so they saw me and that okay here everything is good no that's not like that like once mm. i went to i had to do a surgery at the jugular veins because there was a new study it was quite new but you know how it works on social media Mm -hmm. They say it's the thing you have to do it. You're going to heal. And then famous people started kind of advertising it. And I said, how come other people can heal? And I do not because I tried almost everything, really everything. I want to try it. So we, I took appointment. They got my name for the, this operation. And the morning I reached this hospital, I was, I remember the things I was wearing. I know it's crazy, but that, that's how it works for me. I was wearing a tuxedo jacket with a t-shirt under. It was my casual look mm. with track pants and a pair of leather lace-ups. I reached the studio and I had to sit down because I couldn't stand up anymore. I remember the doctor opening the door, looking around and looking then directly to me. How many times do I have to tell you that seats are for those who cannot stand up? She looked at me. And I said, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's me. Okay. Hello. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I stand up. Okay. No problem. When yeah. she saw me standing up, I went toward Massimo. She said, oh. I'm sorry. No problem. No yeah. problem. So, so yeah. that's my life. People look at me and assume that everything is perfect. Yeah. But you know what? I mean, yeah. And and the, I want to go back uh, because, you know, I don't know so much about this, the, the book that you're writing. And what, what I'm hearing is that they ask you, some people tell you, like, why don't you write? Because... I mean, this is what I'm thinking. I don't know if it's the what it is, but you have, a, you know, a, a important disorder, and um, and then people are like, "Whoa, look at you! You look amazing! You like da 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 da!" And they only see that, and and people are like, "This is what I think." They're like, "Why don't you write a book to probably tell your story, and your story will inspire other people?" I mean, I don't know if that's what what is. Is that something that you are doing, like telling this is who I am and, um, you know, tell me a little bit more about the book, because if you want to, you know, yes, absolutely. Um, because I'm curious, uh, what was that about? I'm starting opening up, so why not talking more about it? Yay. <laughs> Probably in the past I wouldn't do it, but now maybe it makes sense. I think that more than inspiring other people, it's helping people to find a way to relate to what happens perhaps mm -hmm. even to them or members of the families because when something like this happens in a family people around don't know how to relate yeah. because it's really shocking so you don't know what's going to happen you don't know what you mm -hmm. have to say what yeah. is right what is wrong of course it's different for everyone yeah. but 
listening to someone who went through it, who is going through it, can be helpful to understand it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So this is the reason why I decided to continue and listening to other people who are telling me to mm. do not stop, yeah. but keep on writing about this topic. Mm. Yeah, I'm doing it in a way that doesn't want to be too heavy mm -hmm. because I introduce the fashion details that come so natural for me because I really, I absolutely remember the shoes I was wearing when I've been When I had to stay one month in the hospital, I remember the shoes I had when I went to the surgery. So I remember these details. So I collect all of them and I put in the book related to mm. something which is way more painful. Yeah. So it wants to be a clear vision of what happens without being too heavy. Okay, because I don't want to have a too sad impact on people i want to i want people to come across this what i say mm -hmm. try to relate and try to make it how can i say it's it's hard to find a, a word to express it because more than relate to this it's not easy to find other yeah other maybe it's about also company you know a company or uh, somebody that you walk like you were saying that you keep yes. walking that you keep going maybe somebody that, that you can walk with right mm -hmm. and that is also because your stories are beautiful and mm -hmm. the way you write and and the way you because it makes everything you know it, it puts you directly in the moment you know i read something about paris and i thought that i was in paris with you in that mm -hmm. moment mm -hmm. i thought the i read something about the discotheque that you the club you went <laughs> with massimo and i was like oh my gosh you know i it was beautiful everything was beautiful it's right there It is like it's a mix of emotion that they're all together. It could be sadness, could be love, can we mm, uh, infatuation, can be the beauty of the shoes that you were wearing. But it's a short stories that they are oh delicious, delicious. Mm -hmm. How did you get this idea of putting it in this way? Oh. How did you find <laughs> Which is not really an idea because. I never felt so good at writing. I discovered this quite late in my life, just recently. But I said to myself, why not? Just do it. Just start writing about it. Mm. And doing it like Polaroid pictures of what was happening made really sense to me because I could really focus on the details I remember this song. I remember what I was wearing. I remember what was happening in my life. So it was like putting all the pieces together. Yeah. It's like, like the clothes. To, yes. I mean, like the clothes. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, you have all these things and and then you are, uh, you know, you know, writing, discovering. I mean, writing has a lot of like also healing properties. I imagine that for you, you know, creating, you know, like clothing and all that, it, you know, is is also, is, is part of you. So it's kind of like, you know, you feel good about it, but writing takes you like in a journey, you know, and you have all the pieces and it's like, okay, let's see what is going on. What is happening? What is going to happen? No, like a discovery yeah. too. Even though you have the pieces, like with your mom, no, that she had the, the buttons, the fabrics, but then it's like, okay, now you do it. <laughs> What is going to happen here? It, it sounds to me like that a little bit when yes. I hear you. Absolutely, mm -hmm. because I think I discovered that writing helps you to go deeper inside yourself. Mm. At the beginning, I was not that good, but the more I was writing and the more I was discovering and putting the pieces together. So it's, can, it can be a kind of therapy act. Mm that helps you even healing a little bit. Yeah. yeah. In my case, a little bit, not that much because I do not see a big healing. I do not yeah. see this possibility for me yeah. because it's very complicated to, 
but I try to focus on positive energy I get from people. Mm. That's what, as Yolanda, <laughs> mm. that's the real benefit I, I have in my life. Yeah. From this, I can focus and say, okay, I still can have a vision, a long-term vision. Otherwise, it's complicated because I completely lost the long term mm. because it's very hard to, to see yeah. what could happen after one year when you've mm -hmm. tried almost everything, all the therapies, treatments, surgeries. You say, okay, now what's next for me? <laughs> There's nothing more I can do. So it's a bit complicated. So yeah. the energy I get from people for me is absolutely fundamental because mm -hmm. it's something that helps me to keep going. Yeah. I get the motivation to continue. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rosita, do you feel also uh, that um, this um, conversation that we had had in the past about a simplicity of life, right? A simple life, you think that springs also from um, MS in, in your experience with it? Uh, when you and just thinking about that right now, no, like we we talk about how important it is to have a simple life, no, the essence of what is important in life, whether it's one one shirt that you know that is going to last 20 years for you, mm. one um, item that is going to help you for 20 years, a, a book, a, what is essential. Do you think that you start thinking about this simplicity to have the simplicity of life because also how you were growing and changing also through your the transition of this MS for you? I have to be honest. I think that the real change I had in my life has not been MS. I mean, MS is something I will never change, but I started having a different vision because of the pandemic. That mm -hmm. gave me a completely super big shift. That has been the real bomb in my life. Like the wake up call to say, okay, now stop it. Now you really have to open your eyes. If till the pandemic, I, my eyes were open, but I kept on doing the same things I used to, the pandemic told me, okay, now stop it. Now you need something completely different. Now you need to really clean up everything and change lifestyle and everything. I have to say that the pandemic had mm -hmm. a biggest mm -hmm. impact. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You mean like uh, you have to reinvent yourself in a way? I mean, you had to like reinvent your, 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 I mean, you're still doing your fashion, no? Yes. But I, in a totally, you say that it's a totally different way now with Absolutely. the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, And it's not for me. It's not only me. It's mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. We have to realize that it's the story mm -hmm. changed for the world. So we have really to. Yeah have a different attitude. We cannot live following the same rules and lifestyle we had till now. We have to completely do something different. Mm -hmm. And it's not only under a personal viewpoint. I see it in a glo more global way. Mm -hmm. It completely changed my vision. If before it was about having more more and more when the pandemic hit i said okay now it's gone that time is gone yeah now we have to start from a blank page and yeah. understand that we don't need mm -hmm. so much too many you things. know all those things you know the other day i was watching this um a panel of a friend of mine with some people they were social activists no and one of the women When she is from, uh, I think, Australia. And she was saying that she, she's like maybe 65 years old. And she's been in the social activism for like 
since he was like a teenager, no? Uh, she, told, she told this story that she went to Nepal and there was in Nepal, like I would say like, it, I think it was maybe 1980s or something like that, so a long time ago. Uh, she saw in Nepal this like, a tribe, no, like a, a little small town with people like, they were like really happy. She's like, wow, it was, I saw, you know, the economy of the town. They were like, you know, they build their things there. They buy, they support each other. They have the farm, you know, they eat their thing. And she started this movement called localize. So it means like in your area, you know, you eat your food in your area, you support the business in your area. You su so it doesn't have to like, like consume all these things, you know, like you make all this, you know, monoculture, for example, no, you destroy the earth in that way, like only planting like, I don't know, corn for corn. like miles and, miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. And then you ship it to blah, 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 you know, all these kind of things. And she was saying like, like the movement of, of coming back and be like living a simple life <laughs> because there's always, there's this, this kind of, I mean, this illusion that we've been bought into having more is better and more, you have to have the, the best thing of this. And then at the end, it's like, you have to have, there's always something, like for example, with the telephones, no? There's always, there comes another one. It comes and I said, one is going to be, one, this is going to stop, you know, when you stop it. <laughs> no, know exactly. the people over there. Exactly. But to do it. Exactly. You know? yeah. And this is what I hear you. So for you, mm -hmm. in your world, in your, in your world, like you said, I have to think totally different in the sense of how, like in your business, in your, like also maybe your relationships, I don't know how, how important was this shift in your surroundings? You know, like when you decided, okay, I'm going to be simple. I'm going to, I don't know, how you're going to work with some peace. How, how is that? Because I would like to know. For example, in our boutique, if bef before the pandemic, we were taking so many things, Mm. Now we completely refocus the concept. So few pieces, the good ones, that's it. You don't need to buy this, 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 and this, and never stop buying. You yeah. buy very few pieces, but these are the, the good ones. You really good quality. need quality. Yes. And you keep them for the season after. You mix with other pieces, with some new pieces, but they are, they are timeless. There are, mm. You don't buy things that you get tired of. Yeah, things that you keep on wearing, you keep in your wardrobe for many, many years. Mm -hmm. So this is a kind of nice, different vision compared to the previous because fashion was high-end fashion was like pieces you had to buy at a very expensive price, but perhaps the season after you were completely tired to see them yeah. in your closet. Or you had the fast fashion items that you wear it twice and you throw them away. So our concept is completely different. You buy good pieces, mm. but they are timeless. You don't nice. take pieces like that. that you want to throw away a few days after. You mm -hmm. keep them because you love them. Mm -hmm. And in case you don't want them anymore, you resell or you donate, but you don't throw away any more things. Yeah. That's the point. I think we've been educated to consume in a very extreme way because like you're never satisfied. Whatever you have, you're never satisfied. And this is not good. It's, it's a toxic culture we have been educated mm -hmm. to. So we have to get rid of what is toxic and reach a level of self-awareness where we can be satisfied and we don't buy because we are mad and we need to buy. We buy because we see something we like and because we know that that something is going to be something we're going to wear for a long time. Yeah. So it's a completely Very different... Very important to have like really good quality, the materials. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. The materials Absolutely. and the cut that is like, you know, I remember the fashion being like super, you know, shoulder pad, then no shoulder yes. pad. And then they do the opposite. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. They go from one theme to the other, mm -hmm. and then there, there are things that you cannot. But mm -hmm. if you see the good designers, I, I've been reading recently an interview of Helmut Lang, and he said, I'm still wearing the clothes I used to wear about 
30 yeah. years ago, the one he was making, because I still have his jackets, his denims, I ha still have my Margiela clothes, and they are always the same. And when you see the fashion shows, you see designers taking ideas yeah, from yes. them. Yeah. And so that's what I mean, that when you take the good pieces, you don't need to change continuously because those are the ones you're going to wear for a very long time. So this is, very, this is what really counts to, to me, reaching a level of self-awareness where you select meaningful things. Mm -hmm. Meaningful things. When, when you can extrapolate this thought, this idea, this feeling, this emotion to every single thing that you do in life, whether there are relationships, whether it's the way you eat, whether it's the, the way you um, decided to work even. No, there's, there's a, it, I feel that after this pandemic, the change needs to be done across the board. I mean, in every single aspect in our lives, in every single aspect of our lives. I totally agree. I laugh a lot when people say sustainable fashion and then yeah. Greenwashing too. <laughs> and then they do, they buy plastic and they have tons of plastic in, yeah. in their homes. Okay, sustainability is a lifestyle. It's not related to fashion only. Yeah. That's the point. And all the sustainability we see today is not sustainability. It's just a form of marketing to induce people to buy. Otherwise, they wouldn't buy anymore. So it's not real sustainability. I think 95% of brands are not sustainable. It's just greenwashing. And the more they talk about it, the less they are sustainable. So I think we should embrace sustainability without blah, 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 without all that marketing stuff, doing it really in our personal lifestyle, trying to buy the less plastic as possible, trying to avoiding to wasting food avoid avoiding to throw away clothes or whatever we own because instead of throwing things away we can donate to people who cannot afford to buy mm -hmm. which makes yeah. really sense yeah yeah like so yeah. it's a different lifestyle completely. totally, totally. Mm -hmm. I, here in san francisco there's a we, I say San Francisco and United States too. There's a lot of the rest of the United States. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of the culture of like the secondhand stores. No, in Spain is a little bit too, no, secondhand stores. But here, yeah, I mean, there's not so many. There's not not so, so many, no, like in San Francisco, you, and for me, really, I go to secondhand stores. <laughs> I love secondhand stores because you find treasures, really. It's like the sun, the treasures, yeah, like somebody's. Somebody doesn't like it, but for you, it's a treasure. And I think, uh, you know, um, it's a, I don't it's a way to recycle. It's a, it's way a good to way to recycle. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and, and I was wondering, like, sometimes, like, like, there's when you can find all these treasures that you can go, like, and if I will be a seamstress, like, I have a sewing machine, and I try, but I didn't try very much. And it's like, oh, it's complicated. Eh? It's not easy. Like so, like to adjust the, the the clothes, you know, and make it yours. So also, you know, also it's pretty cool that concept of like a little bit like sharing economy, you know, Absolutely. sharing. You know, you have you create the pieces that they are like timeless, very good quality. I always, oh you, I think I always will have you're gonna have market for that. And this other sharing economy of like, you know, secondhand stores, because there's a lot of clothes everywhere. And, yeah. And also is this thing about like today, I, I have a friend here with me from Madrid, my amiga, my friend Lola, that she came to visit me. And I took her to the, to the plaza, you know, to the Mercado, right? Uh, to, to show her the Mercado here. And before we, or... We, I tend to say, okay, a kilo of tomatoes, a kilo of peppers. And, and now I said, no, I'd rather buy one tomato, one cucumber, <laughs> one, um, uh, I don't know, lettuce. Onion. And cook for that day. Not for, you know, like, how can we return to the simplicity of 
buying what is in season, buy, that without charging us more because it's in season, it's the opposite, right? It's like, no, this is the best place, right? <laughs> to the simplicity of getting together to eat. I mean, I think there's many things that they need to, to move mm -hmm. and recuperate and bring them back, change them, make them move to a new direction right now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a good, it's a good job, the, the job we have, right? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> it's about reaching a different level in terms of consuming. Yeah. Being conscious in the way we consume. Yeah, yeah. And avoiding, way, avoiding to waste things is the first, absolutely the first thing we all should do because we choose to waste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 no, totally. And I was thinking about uh, also besides the consumerism is the, uh, the way of like we are had to work like all these hours working, 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 and they make the way to consume easier, meaning here in the United States, Amazon everywhere. You press a button and you have whatever you want, you know? And now, so you don't even have to go outside. You know, it's kind of like here, and it's like consumer and consumer, and now Amazon bought like MGA or whatever. What is that? The, the TV, they go to be the movies. Yeah. A huge movie company. I'm like, oh man, this is just like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> the world, a huge world, Amazon, Amazon world. Anyway, I think that, that there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, I hope this, this pandemia brought the awareness that is bringing you and to many of us, you know, of like change the way of living, change the way of how we see our interactions, you know, with the world, with what we consume, with what we eat, with what our our relationships too, our friendships, you know, being like spending time with each other that is really like quality time. Doesn't have to be like a lot, but really quality time, <laughs> you know? Okay. That's why I'm kind of like changing my, my chip too of like, okay, just feel like calling somebody that I ain't talk with that person in two years. I call it because it comes to my mind and hello, you know what I mean? Um, you know, just being much more aware of what is coming to, to your, to your mind or in order, like, for example, like what you were saying to you know, like, like, uh, you know, the pandemic, so many stuff before that I had to clean up, right? like clean up. And it's also not, on, not only material things, but also emotions, but also <laughs> where that we think about each other. You know, there's a lot of things that cleaning and stay with, with what is true, you know, in the moment. I think our material world is a reflection of our mental world. <laughs> and we had too much chaotic mm -hmm. things in our minds the way we we were consuming the way we were living it was like traveling continuously and never stop doing things it was too much it was not a life where you can have real intention and focus it was really too based on only on excess and when there's only excess it's not good. I think we reached the maximum level in that. Mm -hmm. And the pandemic hit exactly at that point, telling us now you have to completely change and do something totally different and being aware of what you're doing. So it's mm -hmm. really, it helped me more than everything else. It helped me understanding that what happened to me was not, good but somehow I had to try to find a way to continue my life mm -hmm. and do it in a completely different way so that I hope it will be yeah I hope that it will be helpful for other people as well because I think the more we talk about it the more we realize what pandemic has done to us and how we can find new ways to live our lives the more we will generate seeds into other people trying to refocus and reestablish a new world made and trying to live it in a more empathetic way where we can accept all the diversity and differences we have, but trying to mm -hmm. coexist in a 
more mm. yeah deeper way yeah. love it yeah. love that's it. it that's it yeah. I, I i love the way that you brought together everything also mm -hmm. it is yeah. um it makes a lot of sense when mm -hmm. you have in the, your last moment and you these two this minute <laughs> this 30 seconds ago you just brought everything together you just mixed your life with with even your monster with the pandemic with everything with the change that we need and it you just make it you need to 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 see this yourself because it was just awesome how you just brought everything together mm -hmm. and and in any second it was a moment of sadness or it was absolutely empowering so yeah i loved totally. it totally yeah And, and it remind me what you were saying that people brings you positivity and that's exactly what I see in you when you were talking. This kind of like force and saying the things how it is and really like seeing like a brighter, you know, picture. So thank you for that. That was pretty cool. Thank you. Rosita, you need to tell me how, I mean, I'm going to try to say your last name, okay? <laughs> I, and see if it's possible so that I can don't say it to me. I'm going to try to say it. Cigliola. Cigliola, giusto. Exactly. Oh, giusto. Yeah. Bravissima. Bene, bene, bravissima. Va benissimo. Va benissimo, Yolanda. Va benissimo. Va brava. Molto brava. Molto brava. Speak Italian, Yolanda. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much for being with us, Rosita. It's been yes. Thank delightful. you for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, it's, it's been, been a pleasure. Really a pleasure for me. Yeah, to hear you and to get to know you. Very, very nice. <laughs> okay, mi amor. So see you soon. Mm -hmm. Very soon. I hope you one Thank day you. come to Spain or it, we can meet the three of us. That would be awesome. Mm, that would be great. And yeah. also where we can find uh, your work. Uh, you know, like, do you have any, you know, the e not the email, the, e the website or whatever for people that can see yes, us? We you... recently launched a blog and yeah. there is an Instagram page. The Instagram page is Sweet123, which is the name of the boutique. And the same Sweet123.it is the blog name. So everything is there. Nice. And in the blog, we try to talk about change. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's not a pose where you see the pictures and things like that. It's more based on concepts and ideas because we really want to share the, this topic of change and trying to bring something positive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, Great. perfect. We will put everything in the description below. Yes. Okay, we will yes. do everything for everybody to follow you. <laughs> yeah, what you do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Ciao. Ciao, ciao.